St Paul's United Church Stafford is located at 242 Webster Road, Stafford. The building is a split level building. The lower level serves as the church auditorium. The middle level contains the church offices and the upper level includes the hall and kitchen. There are multiple exits from the building and an assembly point in front of the manse on Minamine Street. This safety presentation is based on the requirements of the Queensland Building Fire Safety Regulation 2008. In this presentation, we will look at the escape routes, exits and assembly areas, the location of the firefighting equipment, the use of the firefighting equipment and finally the evacuation procedure itself. As part of this procedure we will also look at the specific duties of event leaders and assistants. A full version of St Paul's Uniting Churches fire and evacuation plan is available from the office for perusal upon request. Firstly, we will look at the escape routes and exits. It is important that you are familiar with all escape routes. In the event that your main escape route is blocked, you will need to use the alternative evacuation routes. If you are in the church, the main exit path is back through the entry doors. Occupants need to move back to the foyer and proceed outside the building. Turn right and follow the driveway to the corner. Once on the footpath, turn right and walk up Minamine Street to the church manse which serves as the primary assembly area. A second door is also available at the rear of the church. Occupants can move to this door, turn right and proceed out onto the driveway. Once outside, follow the driveway to Minamine Street and move up the street to the assembly area in front of the manse. In the event that these exits are blocked, the secondary exit is via the door on the right of the auditorium. Occupants should move to the front of the church and proceed into the hallway. The first door on the left of the hallway is an exit door. Move through the door, turn left and walk between the church and the manse to the front of the manse which serves as the assembly area. There are two exit options available to groups in the hall. The preferred evacuation route is via the main entry door. Occupants proceed out the door and move across the car park to Webster Road. Turn right and follow Webster Road down to the Minamine Street corner. Turn right again and proceed up the street to the manse that serves as the assembly area. If this exit route is blocked, the secondary evacuation route from the hall is through the exit door on the southern side of the hall. Occupants should move through the exit door and proceed down to the front of the manse which serves as the assembly point. Whilst there are also doors on the northern side of the hall, these should not be used as these doors exit into a locked courtyard. If you are in the office, the quickest exit route is in the direction of the church. Workers should proceed out of the office and turn left. Move down the stairs to the door on the right hand side of the hall. Exit through this door and follow the path to the front of the manse which serves as the assembly area. Once occupants have been moved safely to the assembly point and the roll call completed, occupants are to wait for further instruction. Under no circumstance is anyone to re-enter the building until the all clear has been given. Now let's look at the locations of the various pieces of firefighting equipment. There is a 
a dry powder fire extinguisher behind the sound desk in the church. On the upper level, there are dry powder fire extinguishers in the hall and in the kitchen. A fire blanket is also located in the kitchen. The final extinguisher is located outside the church office. If required, a first aid kit is located above this extinguisher also. Now we will look at how to safely use the firefighting equipment. It is important that you only use the firefighting equipment if it is safe to do so and you are confident in using it. Fires can be dangerous and you should always be certain that you will not endanger yourself or others when attempting to put out a fire. All fire extinguishers within the St Paul's United Church are dry chemical fire extinguishers. Dry chemical fire extinguishers can be identified by a white band around the centre of the extinguisher. Dry chemical fire extinguishers contain a powdered substance that when discharged can be used on most classes of fire including equipment that is connected to an electrical source. To operate a fire extinguisher, remember the PASS acronym. P. Pull the pin. A. Aim the nozzle. S. Squeeze the trigger. S. Sweep the fire side to side. Pull the pin. Hold the extinguisher upright and twist the pin to break the seal. Once this has been done, pull the pin to release the trigger. This will allow you to discharge the extinguisher. Aim the nozzle. Before approaching the fire, it is a good idea to test the extinguisher first. Once this has been done, aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. By doing so, you will hit the fuel source. If you aim at the flames, the powder will fly right through the fire and have little or no effect at all. Squeeze the trigger. Pressing the two handles together will release the pressurised extinguishing agent in the extinguisher. Sweep from side to side. Start using the extinguisher from a safe distance away and then slowly move forward. It is important to continue to sweep the fire until the fire is completely out. Once the fire is out, keep an eye on the area in case it reignites. Fire blankets are used to put out fires that cannot be extinguished with water alone and to save people whose clothing may be on fire. Fire blankets work on fires which are being fuelled by ordinary combustibles such as wood or paper, by flammable liquids like oil or gas, and by combustible materials including magnesium and titanium. To use the fire blanket, you will first need to remove the fire blanket from its wall mounted holder. This is done by pulling the two tabs at the bottom. Unfold the blanket so it is completely opened. Hold the fire blanket with your hands wrapped in the top edge of the blanket. This will protect your hands from the heat and flames. Cover the flames completely with the fire blanket by throwing or placing the blanket on top of the fire and leaving it there until the fire goes out. Let the fire blanket cool completely for 30 minutes to an hour after the fire is out. As most fire blankets are designed to be reused, it can then be folded up and returned to the wall mounted holder. The final rule to remember, regardless as to what equipment you choose to use to fight a fire, is to always position yourself with an exit or means of escape at your back before you attempt to put out a fire. You do not want to become trapped if something unexpected happens and you need to get out quickly. If you are the first person to locate a fire, Alert the group leader and, if it is safe to do so, attempt to extinguish the fire. 
remember to make sure you have a clear exit before doing so. Meanwhile, other members of the group should prepare to evacuate. On hearing an evacuation instruction, immediately cease all activity and, only if it is safe to do so, switch off any appliances, equipment and machinery. Assist any person experiencing difficulty with the evacuation. Take a quick look to your left and right to see who is standing or sitting nearby. Walk quickly and calmly to the assembly area via the nearest exit. At the assembly area, form into groups to assist the leader to ensure everyone has been safely evacuated. Report to the leader if you cannot locate the person that was to your left or right before you evacuated. Do not re-enter the building. Remain at the assembly area until otherwise instructed. If, for any reason, you need to leave before the all clear is given, please let the leader know that you are leaving. If you are the evacuation coordinator or person leading an activity or program, there are additional duties to be performed as part of the evacuation process. You need to investigate the fire situation, if there is any doubt regarding whether there is a fire situation, call the fire service. Ensure the safe evacuation of all occupants from the building. Account for all occupants at the assembly area. Ensure occupants do not attempt to re-enter the building until it is safe to do so. And meet the fire service and advise them of any information relevant to the emergency. As there are a number of tasks needing to be completed, it may be necessary to share these duties between attendees to ensure a safe evacuation. It is recommended that the evacuation coordinator or person leading an activity allocate tasks at the beginning of each event. That concludes the St Paul's United Church Staffords